Hey guys, Nestleator Magic here, back with finally another LGS from Hell video. Oh boy, Wedge has the worst cards ever, Lion's got basically any MTG Finance videos, and then I've got this series. What do they all have in common? We all hate them, but we make them because they get views. This is like asking some like victim of domestic abuse to be like, yeah, make a video about it. No, they don't want to relive it. I don't want to think about that place. I wish that place would burn down. But it's July 30th and my ad revenues are down about $600 for an unknown reason. So, um, here we go again. In fact, this is like money day because I've got like a day and a half to make a whole bunch of money before they finalize the AdSense revenues. So, oh, get ready for me to resurrect some gems. But for now, as promised, and really I'm only doing this because a bunch of my patrons on Patreon asked me to. Speaking of that, I'm broke. Patreon link down in the description, yay. Also, buy a shirt. They're pretty funny. So anyway, as I said, I'm out of stories for my uh, old LGS unless I've blocked them out due to PTSD. But I asked around the last couple weeks at my other LGSs and friends that I know that play Magic for their best stories about the old LGS from hell. And I wouldn't say they overshadow mine, but they're pretty damn good. So I've got two major stories, and they're both pretty funny. And once again, I have to reiterate, if you go watch the rest of this uh, series, which you definitely should, it's the highest rated by far on my channel. Every single story is true. Every detail is true. Every word of this is true. These are not embellished or exaggerated for comedic purposes. It really is that bad of a store. So the first one is Lucky actually went over to that store because he needed to, um, I think, pick up a card that none of the other stores had. And then he wanted to try, I guess, running an event there. I can't possibly imagine why that was. And um, everybody was doing a draft, so he said, well, are we going to do Constructed or like a Planeswalker deck challenge or whatever? I think it was the, the week of release. And so the person that he talked to from his description is actually the old judge who lost his judging judgeship status, whatever, got kicked out of the judge program for harassing another uh, person whom I also know. He told him the story. He said he filed a complaint with Wizards and just based on his word alone, just one report, although I have to think that guy had more than one report or complaint, they kicked him straight out. It was that bad. I mean, he was like going off on how he should have won and how the, the other guy's deck was so crap and he didn't deserve to win and, and he misplayed this and that and just, just being a complete asshole while also being the judge judging the event. I mean, he treated me even worse and made misrepresented the rules on purpose anger of the gods cannot damage master of waves okay everybody knows that except that guy and he's well enormously fat so obviously has a whole bunch of self-control and wonderful impulse uh control he's abrasive has no personality never smiles never seen him laugh he never seems to be having a good time at any mtg event ever I mean, I don't know if the guy legit has like some kind of depression or some kind of issue or something, or if he did so much meth, he blew out his happy fuse in his brain. That's a thing that can happen. Bit of an oversimplification though. So what do you do when you're the LGS from hell and your judge gets kicked out of the judge program about three years ago and, and he has to just get disqualified? You hire him to work at the store apparently. What the hell? So he's been working there at least since I went there. So we're talking two, three, maybe four years ago. They heard this one other crazy bitch and had to fire her because she kept just like being a complete bitch to the customers. I'm sure that was in a previous video. So they're two for two on hiring people that just are th the worst customer service people that you could ever find. You can just go find a bunch of like ankle bracelet ex-cons and like homeless people at the bus depot and just tell them to work there and they'd probably do better. But remember, the owner of the store is a straight up psychopath. I mean, he can't read people. He can't make logical decisions. He just shouldn't even be running a business. And I honestly don't know how anything he's got going is still going. It just blows my mind. So he doesn't know Lucky. He doesn't know that Lucky knows me. So he just walks up. He's basically almost never played there before. I don't think he even recognized him. And he's going, oh, yeah, you know, is there another event other than the draft? And he just goes, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, I don't know. I don't know what we're doing. Wow, as far as he knows, that was a brand new customer coming to play Magic for the first time. Wow. So Lucky just ends up just like standing there for like five minutes waiting to see what develops while they set up the draft, check everybody in, all this other crap, and he's dealing with customers. So he's just like, so any decision on that? He's like, I, I don't know, ask around. And he's like, you know what? I'm just going to leave actually. Yeah, you're the TO 
and and the former judge and I'm going to go set up the event that you're supposed to be running. Sure. And I mean, legit people there. Cause he actually in between, he was, people were walking past, you know, going to sit down and he goes, are you playing in that draft that they're starting? And they said, Oh, draft. No, I don't draft. So if he wanted to, he could have walked around to each of those people and got like, you know, constructed or something else planeswalker battle fat pack challenge going you know something like that um but he's just like this is this is a complete waste of my time and the guy's treating me like shit so i'm leaving can you imagine how a place like that is even still in business i can't i don't get it other than they attract really shitty players as you've heard from this series i mean all the worst most offensive people most rude you know just bring a net deck or you're dead to me types you know elitist just like gp star wannabe douchebags that's who hangs around there but that's kind of like the personality of the staff too and i mean word's gotten around at this point everybody knows that's where you go if you're just a, a terrible person like that's where you play that's that's the bad lgs so he immediately called me to tell me like on the way out what happened i'm like why do you keep going there and he's like i'm never going there again as long as i live because this is just bullshit i'm not gonna sit there and listen to his crap and remember they've been planning events for years and years and years i don't even know how long they've been open probably over a decade i have no idea so actually i said it was two stories i just remembered two more um this one's pretty generic somebody came over to the lgs where i play at they said they were new to magic and they tried playing for the first time at fnm at my old lgs from hell and and th as they put it, everybody there was like super hardcore and brought really unfriendly OP decks and they wouldn't help them out at all. They wouldn't answer questions. They were just like, oh, learn how to play before you come here. So then they're like, is there a more casual, fun place to play? They're asking around with some of the players, some of their friends. And they're like, yeah, go literally anywhere else. So they came over to my new LGS, the one where I play now. And uh, they told us all that story. And what do you know? They actually had fun. I think they went like one in three, but still they had fun doing it. And everybody there was super nice. I mean, even me, like I'm one of the, you know, I know what I'm doing and I know all the rules players and, and yeah, new players that really don't know the rules aggravate me a little bit, but I'm not going to show it because I don't want to drive them away. It's impolite and we're there to have fun. In fact, uh, one person, they had just learned how to play magic a couple hours before at my new LGS and, uh... Uh, she was doing great. I mean, for somebody who just learned, I mean, she got a couple things wrong, but you know, everybody's just like being patient, walking her through, oh, this is why this happens and this, and even giving her tips like, oh, you get more out of it if you do this, or you probably don't want to do this because I'm just going to do this in response. You know, like even though there's prizes on the line, like legit helping her, by the way, she almost beat me. She legit beat me in one game and then we were going for the tiebreaker and uh, I had to mull to four and keep up painted bluffs. That's a colorless filter land. Somehow I pulled myself out of it with my Kid Ramper deck. Oh, that would have been embarrassing, but it was my deck beating me. I mean, the game that I lost, that is drew land, 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 land. I mean, you could lose to anybody in any deck by drawing that. Well, thank God she didn't go to the other LGS from hell. Okay, I legit forgot what the third story was. But the fourth one, I think we can all appreciate this because if you've been around long enough, you're going to know this person even though you don't know this person. You know, like every LGS has this person. You know what I mean? He's like mid-20s, lives with, I don't know, his parents, his aunt or something because his parents kicked him out. He, he, as he puts it, will not get a job because he, quote, doesn't like working. I mean, I don't like working, but I do like money. So he got on some kind of disability thing because he's like, honestly, slightly less autistic than I am, in my opinion. And he's actually not a Magic player. He's exclusively a Yu-Gi-Oh player. So he gets like 800 a month from the government and then like his aunt takes most of it for living expenses as like rent and food. What a wonderful arrangement. I mean, he is honestly the second laziest person I've ever heard of. First one's Dracon. I mean, he's he's certified criminally lazy. He literally went to jail for being too lazy to work. That's amazing. I mean, he legit needs therapy and he refused to go and it turned into this whole thing. I don't even want to get into it. So that's, that's the type of person this is. Mid-20s, so he should know better. It's not like he's like, you know, 18 or something. And basically, like, he'll spend money at the LGS uh, occasionally, but I heard that they kicked out his friends or basically just told him to stop bringing his friends because he's got a bunch of, oh, I hate working, you know, like high school dropout type, you know, just like people just like him, basically. You know, people on pseudo disability, oh, it's a bit of a stretch, you know. You know, those people all stick together. So it's like he'd show up and just, you know, play Yu-Gi-Oh, not spend any money, maybe once a month buy a card. Well, then he'd bring his friend to play against, then his friend would bring a friend, and then it turned into like 12 of them, and they'd just take up all the seats, and they just would never spend any money because they're all, you know, broke as hell because they don't work. 
a lot of them smelled really bad. I mean, just people who just need to get their shit together. Too lazy to work, too lazy to shower, too lazy to eat a proper diet. It just, it's like, just come on, people. It's like, boy, you ever want to feel better about your life? Just look at people like that. Or watch an episode of Cops. I mean, people might be thinking, like, I'm kind of white trash a little bit. But, like, that's on cops. That's, like, white trash squared, okay? You're, when you're running from the police through your front yard tripping over car parts while not wearing a shirt. Oh, you left me behind miles back. You're in the white trash Olympics at this point. So they eventually just told him instead of just, hey, this whole group stopped showing up. You all smell. You're loud and obnoxious. Nobody wants to talk to you because you're so awkward. So they just told him, you know, your friends just take up space and never buy anything. They're always trying to like sell their cards to other people like who aren't even Yu-Gi-Oh players because they constantly need money or they're just outright trying to bum money off people or just trade scam them or, you know, who knows how many of those cards are stolen or whatever. They're just bad people. They're just not who you want there, which ironically, it's all all bad people there it's the bad lgs everybody there is that that bare minimum an asshole if not a, a trade shark and just other bad things but they told him your group of friends stop showing up with them and tell them they're not welcome here i guess he still was but he was a bit offended by that imagine that so i think he stopped showing up i mean just think about it you're like so weird geeky poor and smelly that your entire group of friends gets kicked out of the LGS from hell, which has very low standards for the type of person that can walk in the door. What the hell? I just can't believe that they found people worse than the people that already go there. That's amazing to me. Oh, now I remember, this isn't so much a story, but one of the people that typically goes there uh, made up an entire story about getting attacked by... Um, some group of rednecks, as they put it. We don't really have those around here, but okay. I mean, he might as well have said that he got attacked by Swahili warriors. At least put some flavor on it. But yeah, it turns out he made up the whole story. Just made it up so people would feel bad for him. Now, I ain't gonna go too hard on him, because, like, he has issues, for real. But man, people who make up stuff like that, like, just come on. Now, that story, once again, was told to me secondhand, because, obviously, I don't associate with these people anymore. By the way, for a little bit, we did have a defector. We had somebody come from the old LGS, and they just said, they're just so sick of the people there, the decks they're playing, and spending so much to keep up. Like, they, you know, they'd bring a net deck, they'd bring a highly competitive deck, they'd participate in that, because they don't want to not have a chance, basically. Should have followed my lead. I had about a 60-70% win rate there lifetime, and I never net decked. I just built what beat what other people are playing. If everybody's playing one deck, I beat, I build what beats it. But I mean, not everybody wants to look up every card that's legal, put something together, play test it online. You know, not everybody's into that. I get it. Not everybody's into deck building. But the dude wanted to just copy a fun deck list off the internet, spend like 30 bucks on it and just play magic and have fun. And he said he just, he realized he wasn't having fun there. So he came to the new LGS and he was having fun there. I've noticed everybody there and whether they're winning or losing, they're having fun. Oh, and one more story. Now, this did happen when I went there. Um, I told you guys that so many people would, like, rage drop because instead of, you know, win around, win a booster, they, at least back then, used to do... They'd pay the four-in-ones or the three-in-ones, depending upon if we went four or five rounds. So, like, first place would get, like, you know, 14 packs or 10 packs or something crazy like that, and then second would get, like, six, and they'd go down and down to usually, like, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth place. Basically, anyone with, a like, a four-in-one record, for example. So everybody else would either get one pack or nothing, depending upon how they wanted to run it. So if you lost the first round, okay, just win out, you know, and all your opponents are going to be easier from then on. It's not impossible if you have, you know, a lot of confidence in your deck. I've done it. I've lost round one and won four out from there. If it's four rounds, you only have to win three out. I mean, it's really easy. But if you lose round two, you might as well just leave. And that's why I don't like that prize system. The only people that would still play is people who were playing for fun anyway and didn't really expect to win. They just want to play magic. They just want to go there and play some damn magic. It's not about the prizes for them. But for everybody else, oh, one loss, two losses, whatever, I'm leaving. So, okay, one week, so many people left that it gave the same person a buy twice. Now you're probably thinking, but Des, that's not possible. That cannot possibly happen in the tournament software. Oh, but let me remind you, this is the LGS from hell where anything's possible. It's a rainbow of possibilities there. I mean, it's like when, when a tanker truck full of liquid waste tips over on the highway in front of you. You don't know if it's going to be cow manure or like human waste, but one way or another, it's going to rain shit on you. That actually was the perfect analogy. I am proud of that one. The same person can get a first round and fourth round buy if 
more than 50% of the people drop and they're ranked last and everybody ahead of them is ranked above the 50 percentile, inclusive of the people who dropped. As far as I know, that is the only condition under which that happened. And so many people rage quit because it was really, really early on before the Pro Tour and they thought they had a good deck or they just brought an old deck because nothing cycled out and they just got crushed by the people who are actual deck builders. You know, they're looking at this, they're like, oh, I've been waiting for a card like this to come out and they just brought this like powerful stuff. I think I went three and two that day. So he got a buy round one, lost, then lost, and then got a, a buy round four because everybody who was below 50% in, in like the ranking, the points, the tiebreaker, you know, just the ranking list had dropped. That's like 20 people. That many people rage quit and dropped and left and were like, I'm not going to play magic today if I can't win. And the dude had a brand new deck. He wanted to test out his deck. I ended up just kicking somebody straight in the nuts and won in like seven minutes in one of the rounds. So we just played the whole rest of the, the round. We played for like, you know, 50 more minutes, basically. I went over to him. I'm like, hey, I won already. You want to test that tech? He's like, yes, finally. Oh, my God. So now, you know, it is possible if your play group is petty and whiny and, and basically just a bunch of toddlers. In that case, it is possible to get two buys in one day. Or in one tournament, not just one day, one tournament. Hopefully I didn't tell that story before. I don't know, maybe sometime I'll watch the rest of these, make a little Word document with all the stories, and then be like, oh, I forgot this one. Otherwise, I've been making this series for over a year. I don't remember what the hell I told and what I didn't. But that's why I went around asking people for their horror stories from there, and I'm going to keep doing it. So this series will probably keep going, um, although the last couple of FNMs barely had enough people to fire. So the game's dying, nobody wants to play it, eight sets are legal, it's trash, the meta is shit, and everybody's waiting for Ravnica. Oh, and all the top decks are toxic shit, so just nobody has an interest in playing. Nobody has a reason to play. That's why instead of, oh, did we have a healthy meta at the Pro Tour? Who gives a shit, wizards? Are the other 99.99% of people who play your game happy? Are they having fun? Because if they're not, you should be really fucking concerned. Because if they leave the game, I don't give a shit who shows up to the Pro Tours or the GPs. That doesn't mean anything and it doesn't make you any money. You should care if your real customers are not having fun at FNM and are leaving. Like this approach to the second Sun to fairy bullshit. Or this no creativity allowed turn four Red Rush bullshit. Nobody wants to play against that. Nobody wants to play against Aetherflux Reservoir where you need to be running exact, specific, perfect removal to stop that stupid fucking combo. So as soon as Wizards pulls their head out of their ass, four sets cycle out and we can actually play Magic again, might get some more people at the LGS, and I'll be able to ask them about their horror stories from the other LGS. So thanks for watching. I honestly hope I never have to make another one of these videos as long as I live. Don't forget to check out my Patreon and my Teespring store, and I will see you guys next video.